It now gives me enormous pleasure, and I'm sure to everyone in the audience, to invite Dean Manfredi to return to the podium and present Mr. William Shatner that he may have conferred upon him the highest recognition that is within the power of this university to grant, Dean Manfredi. Mr. Chancellor, today I have the privilege of introducing to you William Shatner, the most widely known and celebrated Canadian actor alive today. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome his wife, Elizabeth Shatner, who is here in the audience. A born and bred Montrealer, William Shatner received his Bachelor of Commerce degree in 1952. But McGill gave him more than a BCom. It was here at McGill that William Shatner found his calling. He was president of McGill's radio workshop, active in campus theater productions as a member of the Players Club, and in 1949, produced and directed the Red and White Review. Throughout his career, William Shatner has been as comfortable on stage facing a live audience as he has been in front of a movie or a television camera. While no stranger to the lights of Broadway, 
or to the boards of the Stratford Festival in Ontario or the Edinburgh Festival in Scotland, this prolific and multi-talented actor is best known for his roles on television. The diversity of his talents and his career accomplishments are astounding. Generations of television viewers know William Shatner as Captain James T. Kirk, and as Thomas Jefferson T.J. Hooker, and as Danny Crane. The important word here is and. These three very different characters have achieved their longevity in no small part because of William Shatner's immense talent. Many actors achieve their fame on the basis of a single character or a single character type. Not William Shatner. He has achieved his fame through his portrayal of the commander of the Starship Enterprise, his portrayal of a tough veteran police officer, and his portrayal of a once brilliant but now aging litigator who is possibly suffering from the onset of senility. But William Shatner is more than award-winning actor. He is an accomplished director, producer, and editor. He is a best-selling author of both fiction and non-fiction, and he is a dedicated philanthropist and environmentalist. The compassion, creativity, and irrepressible sense of humor he brings to all he does are integral parts of both the man and his work. Close to 60 years ago, William Shatner crossed McGill's convocation stage to be capped. Today, Mr. Chancellor, I present to you William Shatner that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Letters honoris causa. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to invite Mr. William Shatner to deliver the Convocation Address. Dr. Shatner. Moi, je parle français, mais pas aujourd'hui. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I, too, too numerous to mention, but thank you. Uh, this was a, 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 an easy degree to get. You, they just, <laughs> they just uh, ask you and you say yes and you get a degree. Thank you very much. I'm honored and grateful, but it wasn't quite so easy uh, getting my degree from uh, my bachelor degree of commerce uh, from McGill. I, I had quite a struggle, actually. Uh, first getting into McGill, it being such a prestigious University, my academics uh, weren't all that good coming out of West Hill High School, which is now defunct. Uh, I, I may have killed it, yes, it's true. <laughs> the only vivid uh, memory I have of West Hill High School was uh, corporate punishment, uh, where the teachers whipped you with a, uh, a rubber strap on your open palm for being uh, something you've done requiring punishment like coming late to classes, which I did, uh, being rambunctious within the classroom, which I did, or even burning the principal's car, which somebody else did, and I deny it till this day. <laughs> but the only thing that remains more vivid than anything else was that we won city championships. We became a dynasty. We won several football championships, and I was really the best player on the second team. That's the story of my life. So when I came to McGill, I earnestly thought that I would be the best football player on the second team of the freshman class. After, I, uh, after all, I weighed uh, 160 pounds, and I could run the 100-yard dash in something like 14 seconds. Slow but sure, the story of my life. 
Sadly, I didn't make the freshman football team. Somebody punched me in the stomach and somebody else stepped on my head, and you can imagine I didn't do well with the breakfast I had eaten a little earlier, making my first day my last day. It was then that I discovered drama. Things would have been much easier at university if I hadn't played football and had joined the drama club right away, but easier is not my way, the story of my life. I'd been uh, active in amateur theatricals for several years before that, on radio and on stage, with television yet to be invented. That's how far back I go, folks. And when I came to McGill, I followed those interests and became, uh, at some point, president of the radio club and creative force on the red, white, and blue performing university musicals. It was through creating those musicals that I got my university education. In a student building, a couple of blocks from the present student union building, in the basement, under the stairs, the red, white, and blue had their offices. The uh, offices consisted of a desk, a chair, and a sofa. I made better use of the sofa than the desk. That's a whole other education that I received. <laughs> my point is that my academic life at McGill, where I was working on a Bachelor of Commerce degree in all those accounting, economics, and mathematics classes, none of which I attended because I was too busy trying to clean the sofa in the red, white, and blue office. <laughs> it wasn't easy. In those days, there were very few vacuum cleaners and spray cleaners, and it was all done by hand, another part of my university education. But uh, what this did teach me was not only cleanliness, but hard work. Running around the desk at the red, white, and blue office was hard work. I felt the sweat on my face uh, running around the desk. It taught me that if you want to get something done, you have to get up early in the morning. And when asked uh, what my secret to being success is, my answer has always been get up earlier in the morning. There's nothing you can't accomplish when standing on two feet. When you're lying down, all you accomplish is some REM sleep and working out your dream life. When I graduated, which I did just barely in the fall, after I had to make up a half course in math, which I had failed, I got my degree in September. I landed my first professional job in a small acting company uh, in Montreal, on Mount Royal. The bothersome thing was that I got the job as an assistant manager by telling them I got a bachelor's degree from McGill and that I was adept at accounting and banking. This was the only other lie I ever told. Uh, the first one being that I hadn't set fire to the principal's car. <laughs> it wasn't long before they discovered two things. I had no accounting skills whatsoever, my math skills are really bad, and that I was a good actor. My talents didn't lie in the field of accounting. My father, who paid for my education, was not amused. But my talents lay in trying to be funny and entertaining people. And, though, and although I didn't study that per se, that's Latin, by the way. <laughs> I did get my education complete, whole, and useful at McGill. I got it my own way and I urge you all to get it your way. The road of life isn't linear. It isn't Sherbrooke Street. It's more like Cote de Neige. <laughs> it's a country route, dusty and dirty, with uh, soft shoulders and high banks. Don't be afraid of taking chances, of striking out on paths that are untrod. Don't be afraid of failing. Don't be afraid of making an ass of yourself. I do it all the time and look what I got. <laughs> Thank you.
What can I say other than you heard it here first? <laughs> we'll now proceed with the conferral of academic degrees. Nous allons maintenant procéder à l'attribution des grades académiques, and I call upon the provost, Professor Anthony Massey, to commence the formal proceedings. Provost Massey.